Good morning. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Jason Young here from 3UP Metalworks, and he happens to be one of Milwaukee's top 100 CEOs. He was just named that this year, and he's a veteran. So thank you so much for jumping on with me today and talking, Jason. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So how this is going to work is we're going to ask you six questions about 3UP Metalworks and about your experience as a business owner and having that that just been nominated one of the top 100 CEOs. I know you've got some great nuggets for us today. Is that okay? Those are willing to listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you sure. so much. So when people ask you what 3UP Metalworks does, how do you describe it? Sometimes interesting how to explain what we do, because when you think of metal fabricating, a lot of people think of uh, I would say maybe more manufacturing where there'll be production shop where you're just tacking or uh, moving things along pretty quickly and making widgets and, and a lot of these products. We don't do any of that. We, we do some low volume production, but for the most part, it's a one off piece uh, that needs to be fitted into a certain area that may not be a new construction type material or, or area, I should say. We have to fit around things that have been done over the course of many different years, meaning railings, handrail, uh, machinery, equipment, conveyor systems, ladders, stairs, all of that. Yes, there are standard products for that, but we deal in the, uh, the not standard, I guess, world by which we have to fit those pieces into certain areas that just didn't have, the, have that piece before. Um, so we'll do in the food and beverage industry, uh, the construction industry, uh, dealing with some mechanical electrical contractors for covers of certain things that they need. Again, it truly comes down to that one-off piece that it just, where would we get something like that from? And uh, I would say three up metal works. <laughs> very, very interesting. So every, every day you could be dealing with something completely different and new, trying to, to engineer and figure out that what they need, huh? Absolutely. And some of the things like the ladders and stairs, the concept is the same. It, it, it just may be at different heights, different uh, degree pitches, things of that nature. So we have a good process of, of how we want to start it. it. It's just some of these little things that um, are not or outside the box uh, of what we would consider normal. Okay. Very interesting. So I know you purchased the business in December of 2020 during the middle of the pandemic. What were your plans when you purchased it and how have they changed? Ideally, it's just when we got into it, it was trying to understand what hand we've been dealt or I've been dealt. Um, I knew they had a great background with a couple industries, but not necessarily what I thought they could get into. So it was quickly trying to understand what they did and what they did well, and then taking that on to what I thought they could do and understanding if there was a fit there, if there wasn't, or there could be a fit, but how do we tweak it uh, from both their, my thought process and their way of thinking and how they did things um, and getting over those. These are the things we always do. Why? Because this is the way it's always been done mentality. And not that they necessarily had that, but I get when you step into something like that, that is a process. And um, I quickly learned that they do have, have a good process of how they did it. And they did it a certain way because certain things take that long of time. Um, and if you know me, I don't, <laughs> I'm very quick and want to get things done. So uh, it, it, was a, it was a process on my part to uh, take a step back and, and truly understand their process. And once that was achieved, I think we had a great communication of what the expectation was for me and what they could actually do uh, so we figured out what our new path would, would be going into 2021 and into 2022. Okay. So I'm going to skip ahead and ask a question that I believe relates to this, and then we'll go back. Sure. What is one challenge that you have faced during that time that other business owners can learn from besides stepping back and being patient? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, one of the biggest challenges was during that transition time, we had... Uh, uh, the previous owner involved somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess from a business experience side of things, it's truly understand who you're purchasing and from who and what their intentions are uh, with that sale. Uh, and I only say it as uh, some of the experiences I've had is it was more of a negative because um, 
they didn't think that we knew or I knew what I was talking about. And uh, they would bridge the gap of conversation uh, to me and the previous or current employees as well, um, that what my vision was and what their vision was, was, was two different things. So again, there, there has been, um, I would say, <clears throat> just a situation by which understand what you're buying, how you're buying it, and what and how you're going to move forward with that. Um, typical situations, you wouldn't keep previous ownership involved very long. Mm -hmm. um, I chose to keep them on board for a longer period of time, over a year, thinking that true intentions were to be good and uh, to help the business, but that didn't come to fruition. So um, I would trust in your gut as a business owner of what you're doing and how you're doing it and moving forward with it. And the things are going to work out in the wash. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do good things and you're going to do some things that aren't so great, but understand that those are the times that you guys can, as a team, collectively learn what went well, what did go well. So uh, I guess it's just understanding what the ownership and what you're buying, how you're going to move forward and develop that plan and um, understand that they probably have a good process, um, but that doesn't mean it's the best process. That's great advice. Yeah. And like you said, following your gut and really having that plan of when they're going to be out by and things always don't turn out the way they plan, but they do turn out. So sure. And there's a, the exit plans and this and that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's it just, if you have to push them to the door, I think that's a better situation because mm -hmm. I always say, if you're going to get run over by a bus, you don't know today what you don't know tomorrow. So that's going to happen. True story. Very, very good advice. So what is the biggest way that you impact the community? Obviously, besides serving our country for over a decade, thank you for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think it's, it's the continuous work that I like to do with the veteran community. Um, there are so many different nonprofits, businesses out there that do a lot for veterans. Um, some of the things that I'm involved with is uh, CVI, Center for Veterans Issues, where I serve on the advisory board for them. Uh, the War Memorial down in Milwaukee, uh, help chair and co-chair uh, an advisory group for them trying to get the global war on terrorism uh, community involved uh, with the War, Memor war Memorial. Um, there's just, uh, uh, there's businesses like Hunsinger Construction that do troop packages. Uh, there's uh, Glenroy who reaches out and tries to find, hey, how do we tap into the veteran community and get them coming on board? So there, uh, again, there's just a lot of information that can be passed along. And if I can act as a, a go-between or a connector for that, that's, that's something that I find fulfilling. Absolutely. Well, thank you for all of that. So you talked about exit plan. What does the future look like for you? And do you have an exit plan? Um, I think so, but my wife might see a different <laughs> exit plan, meaning continue working. Uh, no, at this point, there, ne there isn't necessarily an exit plan. There's a inflection point that we're coming on, coming into year three, that it's what do we decide to do? Do we want to continue to to grow? Do we like the lifestyle that we live? Do we maintain what we have? Mm -hmm. um, do we fine tune the process that we have? And that may tackle two things, staying about the same size, but also growing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're coming into that uh, next year. Um, so there's a lot of discussion that's going to be had starting two weeks ago already of where do we go and, and what do we think we want to become? And um, is the space that we have big enough? Is, is the equipment that we have good or is there other things out there? So all those kind of things are happening right now. Uh, as far as exiting, I'm not looking or haven't even thought of that yet. So uh, I don't know if I should or shouldn't, but, uh, but yeah, no, at this point there isn't, you know, would I love my children to take on the business? Would I, you know, would someone else in the business like to, to step up and take it over? I don't know that yet. Uh, again, we are really finding out year three, what we are and what we're going to become uh, in the future. That's great. Well, and just having those conversations is a really good start that you mentioned. So absolutely. So the final question is all subjects open. What inspires you most? 
from my standpoint, I'm still probably military minded, regimented minded. So uh, it, it's getting up still at four to go to the gym, to think about my day. I don't talk a lot when I'm at the gym, even with the people I'm working out with, they wonder why, but I'm already going through things in my head. Mm-hmm. So from the inspiration standpoint, it's okay, how do we get to the next level or how do we get the next sale? I still enjoy the sales game. Uh, I still enjoy planning uh, the meetings, things of that nature. So all that is, is the connections that I continue to make and, and, and overwhelmed with how many other people that I deal with on a day-to-day basis that want to see three up succeed or, uh, see some of their products done by us. Uh, it, it's truly, it's inspiring from, from what we thought going into it two years ago, three years ago of, Hey, let's just make some stuff. What, well, what is that stuff? So those, those, those relationships that we've built thus far um, and the contacts have all been, I don't even know the words to say, it's been awe-inspiring. Very overwhelming and wonderful. So yep. if somebody wants to get in touch with you um, in 3UP Metalworks, what would be the best way for them to do so? Um, you could call, well, you call me personally at 414-322-0522. I take most all calls anyway. Um, but also uh, www.3upmetalworks.com. You can see some of the stuff that we've done. You can inquire on the website. Uh, so uh, again, there's really no way of not getting to know us. Uh, you can call the shop. Um, we'd love not to see a spam risk come through the telephone. So 414-446-5054 is that number at the shop. And anybody will pick up the phone and, and see where we can go with it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for your service, for being, congratulations for being named one of the top 100 CEOs in Milwaukee and look forward to seeing you grow. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.